all of you. Now, that's not my uh, subject tonight. Tonight I want to continue my discourse with you from this past uh, Sunday. Now, when uh, Reverend Jim Baker fell from grace, so to speak, with the PTL or the Praise the Lord movement that uh, he fathered, really, on television, many Christian ministers took to the airwaves saying that Satan, Satan overpowered their brother. In one sense, that is true. That is really, really, really true. But in another sense, it's very immature spiritually for us to believe that there is this spooked up kind of Satan who is around looking for every child of God to bring you down. And whenever you make a misstep, Satan got you. You don't have anything to do with it yourself. But some spooky, ethereal being slipped up on you when you were not aware and just got you to do sin. So it's really not your fault. It's that wicked old demon, Satan. Now, this is theology that is true, but it is geared for the spiritually childlike who are not ready to come to grips with their own responsibility for evil, their own responsibility for good, all right? Now, if we look at nature, if we look at life, if we look at the very atom, which is the small particle of matter, and we understand that the scholars and scientists say, pardon me, that matter is neither created or destroyed. So matter is infinite. So if we look at matter, which is anything that uh, has weight and takes up space, though there are particles of matter that you and I cannot see with the naked eye, but they can be weighed. And they do take up space, but we may not have the wisdom of how to weigh such small particles of matter. But in the smallest particle of matter, which at one time it was the atom, but now the scholars and scientists have seen something smaller than the atom, smaller than the neutron, smaller than the proton, they call it a little thing called a quark, Q-U-A-R-K. It is a small bit of matter, but in that matter, you will always find the polarity or the positive and the negative. It exists in the tiniest particle of matter all the way out to the extremity of the universe itself, you will see positive and negative, or you will see these opposites, and each opposite has a, 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 is a force, and it is the working of these forces that create what we call life itself. So you have life and you have death. You have light and you have darkness. You have positive and you have negative. You have hot and you have cold. You have joy and you have sadness. Is that right? You have pain and you have pleasure. You have freedom. You have slavery. You have truth. You have falsehood. You have light. You have darkness. You have God. 
you have devil or Satan. Now, if God is a good God, and there is no person who believes in God that believes that God is other than good. We know that God is good. Well, then if God is good and all things are created by God, then did God make devil? And if God made devil, how could a good God make devil? And if he made devil to give us hell, then how is God good? And if God made devil, what did he make him from? Since he is the author of all things, and evidently this serpent was right there in the garden, according to the Bible. When you read the story of Adam, you read where God created the heavens and the earth, right? And he said it was good. He created all of this. He created man. Said, this is good. Then he didn't want man alone. He went into man, took one of his ribs. He made Eve. Said, this is good. It never said that God created the snake. But all of a sudden, here come a serpent in the garden, slipping up to Eve to get Eve to disobey God. So all of a sudden, the serpent now is in the garden. And from that time of Adam's fall, when you read the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, you read of man having a problem with this thing called Satan or devil. And he's not able to conquer Satan. He's not able to conquer devil. And just when he thinks he's got the upper hand, Satan comes up and knocks him down. Satan gets into his prophets. Satan gets into his messengers. Satan gets into the people of God's choice. And after God chooses them and makes a covenant with them and delivers them, they turn around and set up other gods beside God. Satan seems to have a way with God's people. I think it's about time that we get a grip on this Satan dude. <laughs> it is about time that we become mature, thinking people of religion. That our pastors don't need to preach these fire and brimstone sermons about you're going to burn in hell, you know. Yes, sir. You, if you don't listen to what I say, you're going to hell. And you're going to burn. And it's an eternal fire. I mean, you ought to think about that. An eternal fire and you don't burn up. Ain't no fire. <laughs> that you have ever seen last too long that it don't fix up matter and get the rid of it. But you're going to be in an eternal fire. I don't understand that, but I do understand it. But I want to help you, by the grace of Allah, through the guidance of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to get a better grip on this thing called religion. So that you will be respectful of the way you were taught, but know now that you are too mature to be taught like a child and continue to respect religion. I wish the pastors of religion would be listening.